I would like to do just that. <laughs> I have, I have uh, worked in this community for many years, 20 year, 21 year Denver resident. I had a uh, encounter and a uh, three day thing starting with the Denver Police Department and Denver Sheriff's Department the Saturday before Easter in 2006. Though I've spoken many times in public and I recognize a lot of people here, I've never yet told this story and here it goes. I was sitting at a bus stop on 15th Street across from the uh, New Hyatt at that time. Uh, several cop cars rolled up. There was a young gentleman also there at the bus stop who had been complained about by uh, a guest in the hotel. So I sat there quietly. They asked to um, uh, if uh, they could search my backpack and I said, absolutely. Please let me tell you that I'm an insulin dependent diabetic and there are used and unused syringes in my bag. I was then handcuffed. There were at least six or seven officers there. Another car pulled up with an officer I've seen around town many times, blonde guy, multiple tattoos, and a huge bodybuilder wearing uh, uh, leather gloves. And as I was handcuffed, he told me that if he got stuck by one of my needles, he was going to kick my teeth in. Uh, inside also the bag was one gram of marijuana. I also had a warrant for a traffic ticket in uh, Jefferson County that I had not yet taken care of. So I was taken to the hospital uh, and was there about 12 hours begging them not to, I'd never been arrested in my life before or after, anybody's welcome to check my record. That was my first time ever in handcuffs. And um, so then I got brought over to the old uh, jail. Okay, in the jail, I was one, I was one of five men in a one-man cell. Um, every time we were taken to see the nurse, there were about 10 or 12 of us in that line, many more deputy sheriffs standing there, and it was yelled, Mad line! Mad line! The whole time, as if I was on a chain gang or something. I was demoralized, dehumanized, and, and it, it was just terrible. Um, in the three days I was in the Denver jail, I did not receive one phone call, and I pled guilty to the possession of one gram of marijuana, for which I later paid a $280 fine. I was then transferred to uh, Jeffco, in which I finally got a shower, a lovely jumpsuit, a pair of Crocs, and I got to watch in a private cell, walk the line, the movie, and had a lovely turkey and cheese sandwich on cracked wheat bread. I wouldn't mind uh, if I ever had another problem being in Jeffco again, but in in Denver it was just it was just horrible. At the time, I wrote a detailed letter of this to then Mayor Hickenlooper and never received a response. Uh, it was just horrible. Having seen everything that's been happening in the past couple of years, I felt compelled to tell my 2006 story today. Thanks. Let me go to Lori and then we'll. Your name? Laura. Laura. Lori and Laura. Okay. Um, I really appreciate the stories that have been told so far, and my heart really breaks for you for this situation. But it further convinces me that the issue in the Denver Sheriff's Department and likely in the police department um, is a, an issue that is psychological. It is not a behavioral issue. And so training, policy, new rules and regulations, whatever, are not going to solve the problem because it's a mindset. It's a culture that is, is in here and unless that is changed. Now, the main reason I'm here, I was at the session last week and it was very intense, um, but the main reason I came back today is because Ms. O'Malley uh, was asked a question about whether she had a role, they, they used the term role model, or another department of some kind that had made some changes that they had learned from. And I don't think there was an answer. Or nobody, and when we went on to something else, but I'm here today to uh, uh, point to a local example um, and that is the Brighton Police Department. Now, this is dated because, okay, I'm hurrying up. Um, Chief Bob Galloway was hired.
hired there in 1984 to transform that department, and he did. And um, as a result of the transformation, in 1993, the Brighton Police Department won the National League of Cities Award for excellence in, get this, customer service. Excellence in customer service. And, and I know that, because I was working with them, that many officers, police officers, customer service, what's that got to do with police work? So I have brought an article, and I only made 13 copies, because there are 13 on the executive committee, and uh, it, it tells about this process. And as you're reading this, I also have a second article that was too long to copy, but if you give me a call, I can refer you to the uh, other article that gives the results that they were achieved, that have been achieved in Brighton. This article is um, uh, was in the FBI Journal um, and 1984, or 1994, in the uh, journal. Okay. So I'd like to, to say, please take a look at it. If you're interested in finding out more about it, Bob Galloway is no longer there. And the other thing I want to say is my picture is on the article, and I think you'll notice that I look exactly the same. <laughs> Very good. Um, Laura? Hi. Um, I just wanted to start out by just um, saying that I was a little disheartened when I saw the preliminary um, recommendations for what we are changing or the reforms. And we're holding these community meetings saying that we're taking input from the people. And over and over, I, I heard a couple things that seemed to be a theme. Um, and none of those things were reflected in what I saw as the preliminary reform. Um, also, I think that we're really wanting transparency to be the number one issue. I think that one of my recommendations is as use of force. We need to clearly state what the use of force is, when it's appropriate, what the, what the consequence of overstepping those are, and make that available to the public so that we can know what our actions are going to be met with, what we need to know if we're in a situation, what we need to avoid so that we don't have a police officer come at us with violence. If we don't know what that is, we can't, as the public, react in the right way. Um, and the other thing, the one thing that I did see as a significant change was how long the um, videotapes would be kept. And that was 30 days, is that correct? That we were, we were making it 30 days they would be kept? And I think that that is not good enough. 30 mm -hmm. days is very, very minimal. When you're inside of a jail, how if you don't have somebody that you're talking to on an ins on a regular basis on the outside, those people are, might be in there for years. They have an abuse happen to them. They can't contact a lawyer or attorney. I think that that is not not sufficient enough. And I'm actually shocked that it wasn't already kept longer than that. And also, I did not have the question of is facial recognition technology being used in our um, on body cameras that was not addressed last time. I asked it several times, and I think you said that you didn't have the appropriate person to um, answer that question. So I was just wondering if the appropriate person is here today. Right, and, and that's uh, the cameras are more of a police department thing. I want to keep us focused on. The I understand. I, I yeah. need to know where the forum is, then that okay, I can well, get an answer to that question. Forum, that's a good question. You, you because that's that something. It's a significant worry chief. of our of the people and the community, and that's that what we're here. Afterwards and, and uh, okay, I think it's but a really public like your question that needs to be really specific and yeah. on targets for a specific topic areas. Okay. Um, yeah. That was really Thank helpful. You. Very helpful. <laughs> I know because I get nervous. Um, <laughs> I don't
academy is approximately three months long, and then there is a four-week field training period once they actually get inside the facility. So it's about a four-month process to go through uh, the academy and be able to be on your own. And the academy class has 34 in the first and 25 in the second? Uh, 27 in the first and about 25 in the second. How many do you expect to hire? Can I have your, your name, Steve? Steve, I'm going to go Ed, Steve, sure. then Laura, and then <laughs> back to Bill. First, I see our time is flying by here, and I saw the categories of you know inmates, accountability, and I don't see where we're at or where we're going with that, so I don't know where to jump in. But so I'll just start with what I, what's on my mind. And I, I think what we're seeing is a result of a lot of things, probably a big picture, probably the Pentagon giving military equipment to the police department, then rate, SWAT raids go up by 1,400%. Yep. And we're seeing that mentality. And I think most of us understand the police have a tough job. I have, I have a history of law enforcement as to my family. We used to be impressed with a guy that, would, that was five foot five and could, could, take, could disable a man by doing his finger that way. You know, he knew how to handle a drunk. And at the end of this conference, the drunk would have his arm around him and talk about his mama. They used, we used to be proud of those. Now, now it's more like it's just jump too. Most people that get beat by police in the cases that I've seen, it's not some the worst of the worst. It's someone that just didn't jump high enough. They just did, they didn't do it exactly what the police officer said. And that's wrong. This is, that's the military tactic. You know, in the, in the military, a person doesn't have the right to get up and say, you know, I have constitutional rights, but that's not what the police are for. You know, I think if we're going to give someone a gun, they should understand that a homeless man wants to keep his shoes. He doesn't, he shouldn't die for that. You know, kids are going to run, a schizophrenic person is going to run away from the police when they're afraid. You, you don't chase them down and beat them. When people go up to a police officer and slap them or do something they terrible they shouldn't do, that police officer has the right to arrest them, right. not beat not the hell out of them, or stomp them on the back and lacerate their spleen when they're handcuffed laying down like a 16-year-old kid. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing bullies. I'm sick, sick of seeing our police 
tell people, you better jump and don't piss me off or you're going to get beat down. I'm tired of it. And we have these committees where we're talking about what we can do. we got to do one simple thing. Enforce the law. Amen. If I go and I slap someone or I shoot someone, I'm going to get my day in court. I'm innocent until proven guilty, but I'm arrested. When you don't arrest these men, there was a case in there after we all saw it on the news where there's a person standing there handcuffed in court, and apparently he growled and did something that the officer didn't like. He grabs the guy and he slams him into a wall, handcuffed. And then we're saying, well, but, but we understand that he growled. The judge could hold him in contempt of court. That officer was a criminal. He was a monster. He could have broke his neck. And there was no concern with that. we got to arrest these people. Until you start arresting them, it's bullshit. You're just Amen. talking in bullshit. Enforce the law. Thank you. My question is, um, what is the Sheriff's Department's status on uh, sovereignty? You're not answering um, questions today. <laughs> they're not? I guess not. I don't know. Well, it's, it's <coughs> Where, where, do you, where are you defining as sovereignty? Well, it's uh, basically if, if you're talking about how how you get yourself into a situation with a police officer. Uh, what my what my uh, question is is there is there something that you can do to prevent even being you didn't hurt anyone or if there's no uh, injured person or property then as as a sovereign somebody who governs themselves is a sovereign. Uh, they're not going to address that. Yeah. They're, they're not that. They're not a deal. <laughs> they don't care whether they're sovereign or not. They don't care. I, I mean, uh, can, I get a, can I get somebody's thought on sovereignty or what the police department would, how All approach? rights are granted to the, you know, the, the government and the states and the individual. The, the federal government is supposed to have at least sovereignty, but I know you can't touch it. You can't touch that one. Yeah. It goes back to the authority. Oh, you it's, can go ahead. I'm, I'm going to yeah. actually okay. Okay. cite well, something you know, here. Just a suggestion of how to solve it. I did want to address because I did see the preliminary reform suggestions um, and so I'm just going off of that which I think actually they're substandard and they're not reflecting what the community is asking I just want that for the record but um, since we we put in there that we want to have more training for these um, police officers and I know that I forget her name Emily um, is it Emily what is her name okay and I, I saw you on TV addressing that um, that the training video that was shown was was substandard and didn't address the issue on, and the responsibility of the police officers to check cells and that was a very specific laid out thing in that lawsuit that, that so when we have these trainings we say we want better training I want an, a forum where the where the public can see these videos where we can see what the training consists of so that we know is there a problem with it and where that problem lies when we can't see what the training consists of then we don't know if it's substandard or not, and obviously it's not working. And like this gentleman here, I just want laws to be enforced. The laws are on the books. The, the use of force is supposed to match the threat, and the, the use of force should be, okay, if this guy's coming at me, what's going to be keep my life and the lives of everyone else safe? But the, then the overuse would be a criminal act, and those people need to be just like us, subject to the laws and I want to first off just mention and this is one last thing I want to thank the Denver Police Department because in my life I know I sound very critical but they are, are such good cops that I hate to see all of these bad things reflect so badly upon you that you're not exactly. respected exactly. my daughter was kidnapped and the Denver Police Department came to my house was very professional found my daughter and returned her to me and I am so grateful for that and I believe that those good cops need to have praise, and that's why I want to see things cleaned up. I want them held accountable, and I just, I just want them held accountable. The, the laws on the books being enforced would do that, right. okay? And the culture is a definite problem because we all know 
When we're around people that don't accept bad behavior, we don't act badly. I don't cuss around my parents, but I might cuss around my friends. Why? Because that is not accepted in that culture. And this obviously is accepted or it wouldn't go on as the norm. So that's all. And I do thank the good cops out there and I hope that you guys can have your respect restored. And that's it. Thank good you. comment. Good comment. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's a great segue, and I, I really believe that you know, a large amount of our police officers that are good cops, but there's no way for them to um, report things uh, uh, that they see happening that they think is incorrect, whether it's use of force. So they're continuing oh, yeah. to have they, they don't go by. They're not answering they're questions, only like I said. The other officers, um, <laughs> if they go and say something, the other officers do things to them. I mean, really bad things. Put backs in their, in their lockers. Or something, or so then 